So right now I'm with Christoph Jensch. He's, he's one of the co-founders of Slock.it. Uh, they have a really cool demo which connects the Ethereum blockchain with, uh, with the Internet of Things. This is the first time I've seen a demo and, say, I, and thought although all, all of the people talking about Ethereum, IoT and the blockchain had a point. Um, so before you see this interview, perhaps you should see one of their demos. If you can, otherwise, uh, let's have Christoph introduce himself first. So yeah, my name is Christoph Jensch. I'm working for Ethereum since over one year now on the C++ client and the test framework, which all clients use. And now I just wanted to do something with it. And we started Slockit, which basically helps you to rent out your property by having a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain connected to a smart lock. For example, a door lock, a bike lock, a padlock. And also we're looking into power outlets. So basically that you can f enforce smart, smart contracts in the real world. So we connect IoT devices with blockchain, smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. So let's take an example. Suppose yep. I have a bicycle. Yes. And I want to rent my bicycle. Yes. And I want it to be, ze is, I want to be, I want my bicycle to be zero headache. So I, I just want to keep it, lock it. Anyone, anyone pays money on it can move it around yep. and then return it and it, it gets locked again. Can you do something like this with Slock? Yes, in the future. <laughs> like right now we have everything which is in the home because in the home you have Wi-Fi, you have power. If you have bike locks and padlocks, we are working with this because there you need to get the, the uh, internet connection through your smartphone, but it's doable, let's say it like this. But the basic smart contract is exactly the same. It basically means that you as an owner of a bike, you can set a deposit and the price per hour, for example. And you set this in a smart contract. Then anyone could come, pay this deposit, and he's, setting, he's then the current user. He can then send a message to open it or to un unlock it and lock it. It can use it for a while. When he's done, let's say after two or three hours, he just returns it after he has locked it. And then the deposit comes back to him and the costs go to you. And this completely automatically. Okay. So and no, one, no one needs to be interfering. We are not doing any transactions, so even if Slocket would not, would not be around after one or two years, the this, this lock would still work because this one is completely decentralized on the blockchain. Okay, so, so let's take another example then. So the example is you wanting to rent your home as a, yes. as a, as a stay for one night for me. Yeah. So using Slocket, what you can basically do is um, you will configure the lock on your home to unlock at my command if I pay a certain deposit to a smart contract, is it? Correct? Yes, it's the same smart contract. So we have built something which is working now, so we have a prototype up there. We have a little Slock home server, mm -hmm. where we have one uh, Ethereum client. Yeah, mm -hmm. I should look there. Mm -hmm. So we run the Ethereum client, and also we use something called Z-Wave, mm -hmm. which is uh, known in the smart home technology, mm -hmm. to connect to smart home devices, such as a door lock, such as a power outlet, and other things. So what you do there, Someone pays the deposit, he gains control of it, he sends, we use a whisper, a whisper message to it. If the private key matches, which what he finds in the blockchain, then he sends an open signal to the lock and the lock opens. So basically you pay a deposit to gain access control. Okay, so, so basically uh, what the blockchain is doing is defining who can control a device. And to actually control the device using my smartphone, I'm using this other protocol developed by the Ethereum community, which is called Whisper. Yes, because you do not want to do everything on blockchain. You don't need to consensus for a link, like when I do open my door every time or close it. It's also about scalability. Like the Ethereum transactions are only when you rent it and when you return it. Like when you pay the deposit, you get a bad deposit minus the cost back. Those are the real Ethereum transactions. And everything in between are just messages signed with a private key to this lock. And then he decides if this matches what he finds on the blockchain, and if so, then you are allowed to open or close. Okay. So, so, le so let's imagine for a moment that I am the lock. Yes. So when I'm the lock, I need, uh, I need to basically know two things, which is who is my current owner. Yes. And I need to know whether I need to open or close at the current moment. Yes. So, um, so technically, how does the information about the current owner come to me? Is there an, do I have an Ethereum node running on yes. me? Yes, there's, there's an Ethereum client running on this log home server. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there it checks for data in the blockchain who's the current user. And then the same client also receives those whisper messages. And then he can just check if this matches. And then he sends out a Z-Wave signal 
to the door lock or the power outlet to your smart home devices, and then they open or close. But it's all like in this little Slock home server controlling the devices and getting information from the blockchain. Okay, so what are the what are the physical uh, infrastructural requirements for a certain lock or a certain device to work this yes. way? Yes. So for let's take the door lock as an example. You could buy an Amazon today, check for Z-Wave smart locks, and you find a lot of different door locks. So you need one of them. The cheapest one of about hundred dollars, hundred thirty dollars. You install it, and then you just need our Slock home server, and all it needs is Wi-Fi or LAN internet connection and power. That's it. And then you have this somewhere behind the root router in your office, and this then connects to your door. That's like all you would need in, in your home to run the system. Okay. So conceivably, the uh, this thing could be done by like a centralized service as well. Sure. Right. Like uh, conceivably, we could imagine that you could have the similar kind of functionality. That functionality that looks very similar, but instead of the Ethereum blockchain for the payment processing, there's uh, PayPal or I don't know credit card payment, and uh, the lock is actually controlled by the uh, signals originating from the server of a of a particular IoT company, and then the IoT company has apps that users can install in order to unlock this device, right? Yeah. So, um, what do you think are the major advantages of a decentralized solution versus a centralized architecture like that? So of course, there are many. First, you have the single point of failure. The other thing is also with, with blockchain or with virtual currencies, you can do microtransactions. Like renting your bike out for 10 minutes or so, costing 50 cents. Your, do this paper or credit card, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. And the other thing is having enforceability of smart contracts. If you do this with a centralized system, you, they need to do this. So if, if their system is not working, if something is not there, okay, it just doesn't work. But here you have enforceability of decentralized smart contracts to the physical world. I think it's the first time we can see a, yeah, this enforceability of something which happens on the blockchain other than just moving currency around. Mm -hmm. You just pay and then something in the physical world happens, like a safe could open and you have something very, very important in there. And you can have a... It, because it's on a blockchain, which is a big, big open API, you can write another smart contract saying, okay, if five out of this seven people agree to do something and pay something, then it sends some money to this smart contract of the lock and it opens and you can find something in the safe. So you could think about all the things which build upon this technology because we have it on the Ethereum blockchain and all those smart contracts can interact with each other. So you can think about complete new applications. Like every time I'm explaining this to someone, he has another idea, like do a parking slot thing. Or like when you drink something, you pay per milliliter. And you have tons of ideas what you can do with enforceable smart contracts and IoT. It's just amazing. Okay. So, um, so I think like one of the big advantages that I see for, uh, for something like this is the fact that, let's say I have, you know, 10 different IoT devices, or I don't know, 100 different IoT devices in my home yeah. that, I, that I want to control or have others control my devices. And each, if, if these 100 devices have like 15 different manufacturers, I, uh, and um, one of the manufacturers, you know, or two of them start to not maintain their systems properly or go out of business, then basically in, a, in the centralized approach, my those two those two devices may not uh, work as well if if the manufacturer goes out of business. Yes. But Ethereum being like this decentralized trustless platform that has zero downtime, uh, yeah. I as a device owner am also have some kind of peace of mind that this will system will keep functioning yes. for the conceivable future. So I mean, like even if Slocket would not be around in five years for whatever reason, your the product would still work because it's completely autonomous on the blockchain. So we don't need to run any servers, to, pff, nothing. So yeah. that's the nice thing about it. Also, it's, it saves us cost, actually. You just deploy the stuff and you're done. You have nothing to do with it anymore. It works on the blockchain. So uh, what, kind of, what kind of person is your real customer? Meaning, uh, who is actually going to use Locket Tech? Like the consumer is going to use Locket Technology. But are you trying to serve uh, the developers of IoT devices or companies making IoT devices or what kind of people uh, are you targeting this to? So first of all, it is a developer platform mm -hmm. in the basics. Mm -hmm. Everyone can use it on the blockchain and con interact with each other. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, our target is the sharing economy. To share your car, your bike, 
your home, your washing machine, your lawnmower, and so on and so on. Like we are focusing on that everything which you can lock, that you are able to rent, sell, or share it. You could even think about a store which is open 24 seven without any stuff. All the things they are just locked with slots, mm -hmm. and you can just pay, open them, and grab it and go. Mm -hmm. Like complete is all autonomous. Yeah, so the use cases are so vast that we just don't focus on one right now. Just say we build a basic technology which you can deploy on all of them. Mm -hmm. But yes, sharing economy is what we focus on for, like what we stand for, what we want to push forward. Okay. Now, now uh, in your architecture, um, like whatever you deploy on, on Ethereum is 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 public. The sure. smart contract logic is public. Uh, do you have Do you have any um, what, what is your way of monetizing such an open architecture? Yeah, that's an interesting question. We will talk about this on Thursday tomorrow in the presentation. We will do a really cool stuff. I can't tell you right now to, because I want to have the bus tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, we will add services around those products. Like on the basics, this is open source platform everybody can use. Mm -hmm. But then you need services, some like you want to pay in fiat money maybe. You want to maybe have some site where you can find a room you want to rent. And there are some services we could build around this to monetize it, but there are also other ways, and we will present them tomorrow. So please stay tuned and see if we have something good and good and good there. Yeah, that sounds that sounds that sounds really cool. Building additional services around to to monetize a system like that. Do you already have any customers or use cases lined up? So since we have not released our product, so you cannot buy it yet, no. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we get daily emails from hotels, Airbnb hosts, bike sharing company, uh, we have even a car sharing company from Netherlands, companies who are building very small homes to rent out for students. Like they are writing emails to us and they want to deploy it, so we just say, wait, just wait for a couple of months and we hope to give it to you. So really, I think in a six, I hope so, in six months time, we can show you real world use cases in sense of it's, it's used. So people are using it to rent out whatever. So, but it's really good. And uh, where can our listeners find out more about Slock? Just go on our website, slog.it. Mm -hmm. So there you can find some more information about it. We keep you updated there. There's also a mailing list, so please sign up. Then you get the latest news. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much.